we're the son of a bitches that started these guys on the thing because we started listening to their music. I I wasn't a big rock and roll fan per se in nineteen in the fifties, but we started listening to rhythm and blues. That was black music, and I'm, I'm and I'm telling you exactly where this come from, where I believe it come from. We started listening to the black music, and when we started listening to black music, they just figured that everything else could come along, and it did. And he eventually got to the Civil Rights Bill, and eventually the Civil Rights Bill led up to this and this and, and a little more and a little more. Till now, you've got a lot of your whites out there that a black a black is nothing else but just just a, another person out there with no different color, no different anything. And you, you know, you know, still a lot of us that that don't believe that, and I never will believe that, and I don't teach my kids that, and my kids don't teach their kids that. I think it's the majority of the minority. That no, has, uh, I think it's, I don't think it's the majority of the white people yet think that way. No, I think we still good. Majority of the white people would prefer, you know, things be different. Okay, just 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 do your thing and let us do our thing. Why do we have to mix if we don't want to mix? I can understand them wanting to mix, but if I don't want to mix it with you, why should it create hard feelings? Why should you dislike me because I don't want to mix with you? Two things that I got against the blacks, and I've told you before, is the attitude towards the white man because they think we owe them something. And next is they want to marry fucking white people, you know? I, I, that, I, that I could hate for that. That really upsets the living shit out of me. I can live with the attitude thing because I don't want to fuck with them. But when I see a black guy with a white girl, it turns my... It turns my stomach. But here in town, we had a goddamn swimming pool. They started letting the blacks come. What happened? It became a black swimming pool. No whites went. So I know whites don't want to be with the blacks that much. There's certain things we don't want to do with blacks. They've got a different culture from us. We've got a different culture. Everybody's got their own deal. What is it with black people that they don't want to feed their, their families? Why do they go out there and make so many goddamn kids that they can't feed them and got to depend on somebody else to do it? That's my opinion, you know, and I don't know if uh, if I'm right with that, but I just think that they're a, 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 a piss poor race. They won't earn their own. Uh, how, how is it they came about choosing you to be Johnny Rebel? Okay, which I was a logical person because you know I, I did I did most of the writing in town myself and, and J.D. Miller. Well, they just asked me if they thought I could if I thought if I thought I could come up with stuff, you know, in the same vein as this, you know. Well, I doubt if I could come up with something like flight in double ACP 105. That was pretty unique, you know. But I told them, you know, maybe they gave me an idea. They go gave me the idea about Cajun Ku Klux Klan. I said, okay, I went home and I tossed it around so And I come up with this, with the Cajun Ku Klux Klan thing, you know. Took it back to them and played it for them, you know, and they were kind of ecstatic about it. You know? Something that I just find kind of curious and kind of funny is that, uh, you know, you, I, I asked you about... Uh, the names, you know, why it is you chose the name Johnny Rebel, this and that and the other, and you had told me that you didn't choose the name, the producers chose yeah, the name they, for you just like the rest of the names, and that they did it because uh, they felt like your name sounded too ethnic, too French, right. you know, and mm -hmm. uh, ironically, a guy named Dago telling somebody that their name sounds too <laughs> ethnic, uh, you know, it kind of, kind of floors me, but beyond that, and what was the other name they had uh, originally proposed to release these records on that you were telling me about the other day? I'm telling you about a name of Carney Hall <laughs> when I'd recorded some sides in, in uh, Nashville. Ferland Husky suggested that they call me Carney Hall. <laughs> I you, I, I'm not quite sure how the Johnny Rebel series would have gone, gone over, uh, released under the name of Corny Hall. Hall. Right. But that, that Johnny Rebel thing, I don't know, I, I don't know whether it was J.D. Or, or, or Dago. I think it was J.D. that come up with the idea, the, the name Johnny Rebel. Okay, well, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a minute. Just, of course, I'm going to throw out the, the arguments that they're going to throw back at you, which is that uh, they didn't ask to be here. They were brought here and changed by the white man uh, 150, 200 years ago. They were enslaved. Uh, then they were set free. But even though they were technically set free, uh, they're still under the thumb of the white man because there's no because we still don't truly view them as equals, and consequently, it's only fair that they be given a, a little handicap here in the form of an affirmative action program or another little handicap over there in the fort because otherwise they would never get a fair shake from the white man because whether we admit it or not, deep down inside, white folks are all to a greater or lesser degree still racist and that they're never going to get a fair shake otherwise unless the government intervenes 
and, and levels the playing field. Well, how do you feel? My response to them would be one question, Brad. When the hell is it going to end? When do we stop owing you people if you think we owe you something? We're still turning our backs when they go down to the welfare office, when, they, when they, we know they're lying, they're not checking on it, and all this kind of stuff. Listen, Brad, I've got a daughter that works for social services. I wouldn't uh, know her, uh, mention her name, but this is one of her pet peeves. The way her supervisors tell her to turn their back, to turn her back, she won't do it. When they apply for something and she knows they're lying, supervisors are white. But they don't want any hell raised. Let me tell you something. People that get in, in, a, in a position of authority nowadays are usually older. Mm-hmm. Got four or five years left before they, they retire. Let's not make any waves. Let me coast on out of here and I'll have my money when I go home and I'll be fine. Y'all can argue after I'm, I'm gone. And each person that steps, steps up into a position of authority in this damn country does the same thing. They will not stand up and say enough is enough. You know, where did you come up with the material for caging KKK and looking for a handout? I mean, well, you... looking for a handout, to, you know, well, that's just a, you know, when you think when you think black, and especially when you were thinking nigger in those days, well, you were thinking handout, okay? You know, federal government giving them this and giving them that. How did uh, caging KKK and looking for a handout sell initially when they first came out? Did it, were they moving pretty well? Oh, they moved, yeah, they jumped out there. Yep, they really started selling. Okay, and after releasing uh, Cajun KKK and looking for a handout, uh, you had, you had uh, told me in the uh, earlier interview that uh, it had been played on, by a DJ in Kansas City and, and someone, a member of a group called CORE, which I understand stands for a Congress on Racial and racial Equality. Yeah. Equa- okay, mm-hmm. uh, had heard it and had, uh, what's the story, contacted he, he, the Attorney he, he, General? He, he contacted the Attorney General's uh, office in Washington. Okay, and the Attorney General at that time was... Robert Kennedy. Robert Kennedy. Mm-hmm. After Core contacted uh, Bobby Kennedy about it, uh, what, what, what was the net, what was the end result there? They sent somebody down. Well, here well someone came down here and had a meeting with Jay, and he played him the thing. Now, what they had reported that I was using some vulgar language on there or something, you know. Uh, the complaint wasn't about nigger, you know. The complaint was about what? Then? Uh, about uh, well, I think in in, in one of these things I. Jackass. Or I use the word jackass or something in there. Okay. Yeah. Well, now when Core went to the Attorney General with their complaint, surely when they went, they went with a complaint about the word nigger. Surely they didn't complain about. I'm jackass. sure they did, but uh, so I'm assuming apparently there wasn't anything wrong with what I was saying. You know. So they basically <laughs> came down trying to find something else something that they else. could use to right. pull the rug out from under you because right. they couldn't come down here on the pretense that they were right. investigating you for using the word nigger because even though someone right. may find it offensive. Uh, you know, this being it's America, a word. it's you, a word, right. and uh, so there, there was there was no, yeah, you know, I didn't no slap on the wrist, nothing for doing it. No, I didn't ask you to slow your roll or anything of the sort. Uh. Not a thing. I think they kind of snickered about it. <laughs> from what Is that I right? Jay telling me, <laughs> See, okay, thought it was kind of comical. All the, the same two recordings, apparently, and I don't know if this was the same year. You didn't tell me what year this happened. It apparently brought you the attention of the KKK. As uh, you also mentioned in the same interview, that uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Shelton had come down. Robert Shelton, yeah. Robert and me, an honorary member of the KKK. They, so they basically wanted you to yeah. become the Klan poster boy as far as uh, <laughs> don't know. representing them musically and whatnot. And, and they wanted to go do some shows in which. They wanted you to play live now? Yeah, they wanted you live to go shows. In? Yeah, yeah, live shows, sure. Okay, but now you also mentioned that you did indeed finally perform one time as Johnny Rebel. In Kaplan. Louisiana, that few of them started hollering out there, hey, go ahead and, he called me by my real name, you know, go ahead and do this, do this, do this, and I said, okay. <laughs> so we did it, we did it, looking for a handout. Yeah. And, and this was the a, same band that you recorded it with, mm-hmm. just Pee Wee and the Country Boys, mm-hmm. y'all were out there playing right. uh, outdoors in, in Kaplan, yeah. Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and how big a crowd was there present oh, for this? Quite a, quite a few people around there, and we noticed a few blacks go by. But nothing happened. It went by. Well, they did, didn't did, stop did, and listen now. They just went on by. Did it appear that the, the lyrics floated to them on the air yeah. and they heard it, or did they just, they just kind of <laughs> turn the blind eye? Li- they might have been being a little, little nosy. Just made themselves <laughs> scarce after <laughs> yeah. they heard the lyrics. And <laughs> and, and the uh, the reception you got from the uh, white audience members, you, uh, I remember you said it was positive, I tell you? Oh, yeah. I all like yeah, uh, White's always like that. I mean, you know, I can play this I, anywhere. And, uh this stuff anywhere and they'll just get crazy with it you know 
Believe it or not, uh, Johnny Rebel has black friends. He's told me he does. Yes, he, do. he doesn't hate everybody because they're black. I have uh, black friends. Uh, they're just good people. It had nothing to do with their skin. And color. I do the same thing for, for for a black friend of mine. I do the same thing I do for a white friend of mine. The the, the blacks that I like, I'd go all out for them. Hell, they ask me for if they ask me for anything, I'll let them have it. Before I've worked with them, years and years ago, before I ever recorded these songs here, I've invited them in my house, drank a cup of coffee with me and everything else. I have no problem with that. That's before the Civil Rights Bill. Was, but that was my choice, just like Jay said. Nobody, nobody, you know, hell, he chose his friends according to him. I mean, you can't, you can't. Uh, I just get so goddamn upset when I think of the federal government trying to make me like a black. That is the damn whole deal of the thing. They're trying to shove them on us. If they would shut up and leave everything alone and guys like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton would go and try to make a living somewhere, somewhere else honest, instead of trying to take advantage of their black folks, you know, they're the son of a bitch that's more racist than anybody because they want to make everything a racist issue. It doesn't matter what it is. They want to make it a racist issue. Is it a pretty well kept secret at the time who Johnny Rebel actually was? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, I didn't go around advertising. We didn't, we didn't go talk about that a whole lot. All my close friends knew, you know, musicians knew, uh, you know, and stuff like that. But as far as trying to get it out to the general public, like a big secret, you know, a family secret. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you've done a good job of keeping it. Cause I tell you, as, as well known as the records are, it's just amazing to me that for this many years, Johnny Rebel has remained the mysterious Johnny Rebel. We're still working on material for an upcoming CD is a whole, you know, of course, this is a, a new day and age and this and that right. and the other, and I think the inspiration behind doing it now has probably changed for you a little bit, has mm -hmm. it not? I think your exact quote was, I'm about ready to put some more of them sons of bitches out the way things have gotten nowadays. Yeah. What, what's behind your desire to put some out now? Really, Brad, I guess you'd say that, you know, I, the attitude of the black man is what turns me off. You know, it ain't so much the deal that I, I, I like calling them li niggers. They got a bad attitude. They want everything from us. They think we still owe them something. I don't owe a nigger anything. I don't owe anybody anything in this life, okay? And that's the way I feel. And I know that's the way 99% of the white people feel. Only if we're unfortunate enough to have a bunch of damn politicians out there making laws, taking our rights away from us, shoving them down, our, shoving uh, things that we don't want down our throat. Man, that's really basically what I try to get through. And I don't want to I don't want it to come out as hate. It isn't, it isn't hate. I'm rebelling. I, I, I feel like the establishment is sticking this finger up our behinds, okay? Mm. They're not giving the white man the break. They're taking away from us, giving it to them. I don't feel it's right to take my damn tax money and give it to a, to a, a black uh, person, you know, for anything. Let him go earn it. What is that all about? What do you think is the reason that, that, that a young white kid, a white teenager, a white guy in his early 20s, what, what is the attraction? Uh, we used to have a little expression, we're going to get rid of these goddamn niggas. We have to fuck the black out of them, in other words. In other words, white man had to go uh -huh. fuck. Well, what's happening now is that nigger is fucking the white out of us. That's exactly what's happening. Because we're seeing these goddamn white girls hang with these goddamn black boys. And 99% of it is white girls hanging with black athletes but no, you don't see too many of the white guys very black very guys. very few white guys with a black girl what the hell they see in them i don't know and what i don't understand is it and i know they they know this i see a white girl with a black guy i find out they've been with a black guy they may as well uh that's it they may as well turn into a man i mean my right. interest in them dies that quick i mean that's it's right. just uh, it's not uh, the, the, the discussion's over we ain't talking about <laughs> it I, and, and i know that they know that that is the attitude of most mm -hmm. white guys so it's all when they make that choice it, it's basically a choice in my they opinion make it for, make it for life, life you right. know and, and it's kind of the female equivalent of what these black kids do that dress up like these black they're alienating themselves from mm -hmm. their whole race and and i don't know if yeah. it's whether they don't realize they're doing it or whether it's a conscious decision they're making and and if so what the reason for that is i mean i don't understand what the inspiration behind it is why in the world would you choose to alienate yourself and your entire race through either your actions as a black man as a white man acting like a black man mm -hmm. or a white girl dating a black man I mean, what do you think about that what do you think that the, the thought process behind that is what the hell possesses someone to do that i don't think they have any fucking thoughts i think some of it just goes blank gets a brain cramp Son of a bitch can't want to be a nigger. 
people have almost bastardized the definition of racism at this point by the year 2001. Well, racist was somebody that actively promoted uh, hate, hate and hate violence hate and whatnot hate. toward another race. Now, it's, it, uh, you're a racist. Uh, like you said, if, if you just... If there, if there are even things you're not comfortable accepting about another culture, I don't hate anybody because they're black. Mm-hmm. I don't wish any ill will on them. I don't want to see any of them tortured or enslaved mm-hmm. or killed. Right. But at the same time, there are parts of their culture I'd rather keep at an arm's length from me. That's right. I, I don't want it any closer to me than something I see on a TV right. or what have you, or, or my family, my immediate family. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that, and I don't feel like that should make you a racist mm-hmm. in America in the year 2001. Yeah, I do I feel they deserve all the same rights that, that uh, right. Hispanics uh, enjoy, Caucasians enjoy, Asians enjoy. I certainly don't think of them as being less deserving of any of those rights, but there are just certain parts of the black they culture that I... They shouldn't be I, able to impose their goddamn uh, crap on us, you know? Exactly. They want me, as, as a white uh, American male, to assimilate a culture, a black culture that I personally have no interest in. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only not have any interest in it, there are a lot of aspects of it that I find destructive and negative, mm-hmm. and, and just quite frankly, not things that I would want anybody I really care about exposed to, because mm-hmm. I don't like what I see. I don't like the... If that culture produces persons like some of the ones I've met, uh, then that's not a culture that I want people right. that I care about exposed to, because I see with the end result, I see the byproducts of that culture all over the place. They're all mm-hmm. over the planet. Uh, you like know, you said, I don't think there should be anything wrong with me choosing to distance myself right. from that. I don't no, think no, that no. makes me a they, racist. Okay, they won't even leave you alone about it. If you don't want to fuck with them, they, they still call you a racist, you know? I'm not a fucking racist. I just don't want Hey, I want to be with my kind. That's all there is to it. I want to be with my kind. I'm more comfortable with my kind. Nobody's willing to call a spade a spade anymore in this That's country because right. they're so fearful that Jesse Jackson is going to show up, label them a racist, and they're going to lose business behind it. They're going to lose, if, if they're a politician, they're going to lose uh, the, the, their voter base behind it. Everybody is so fearful of being labeled a racist that we walk on eggshells and pussyfoot right. around everybody. Right. And, and basically, just like you said, I guess, uh, even all the, from the government all the way down to the welfare That's office, right. just, uh, well, just don't make any waves because if you do, they're going to claim, they're going to play the, the race card. And claim That's it's a exactly black thing. Right. And unless it gets really out of hand, nobody takes them on. Bullshit. Affirmative action? It stinks. You know, I, when I start talking about some of this kind of stuff, I start really getting aggravated. It's not hate. It's just who the hell do they think they are? We don't owe them anything. You know, uh, I haven't had an easy time all my life. I was a poor man. My wife, my wife was a real poor. She was way poorer than we were. You know, they had to struggle. Her parents had to struggle. They're still not educated. Hell, they don't go around saying the government owes them anything. There's still as much racism in this damn country as there always was. Even though they got their way with the Civil Rights Bill and they were allowed to go here and there, you just can't legislate me liking somebody. Exactly. I choose who I like, not by the color of his skin. You know, I'm just like anybody else. I don't want to hate the son of a bitches. But why do they keep pushing in on me? You know, why do they want something from me? And I told you this before, Brad. Uh, I'm a Cajun. I, my my folks came down here from Nova Scotia. God damn, we don't go around begging everybody and telling everybody you owe us this and you do your Cajuns settled down here and made a. This is our part of the country now. You know, mm-hmm. we built this part of the country down here. Well, that I guess I'll just hold up right there. Then I guess. <laughs> well, you're rolling, well, I'll you're get rolling. I get hacked off somewhere. Yeah, I get pissed I off. Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. Look, this guy, Alan Keyes, hey, when that son of a bitch speaks, I'll listen. Uh, he's an intelligent black man. Uh, he makes Jesse Jackson look like a fucking first grader. And, and, he, and he talks about his race. Why do we keep depending on them? Why do we want affirmative action? Why do we want a head start exactly. on a guy? We're just telling them that we're too dumb to be able to get something. They get. This is the way he talks. And I mean, he can't find better than yeah. a nigger that's going to counter another exactly. nigger when he starts his exactly. shit. At least he can't say, you're a racist. At least he can't tell us somebody he's a racist. But if you ever get a chance to listen to Alan Keyes, listen to him. Black as Ace of Spades. He's a, he's a true black man. He's black as that shirt right there. That don't make no difference. The white man says he's a racist. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it's not just he has a different viewpoint. He's a racist. Right. Now, a black guy is saying no one knows what to make of it. Yeah, and, and they it, can't call him a racist. But the only thing that's ever going to happen to change this shit around, make these fuckers 
change around is for a few niggers like Alan Keyes or the guy you're talking about, or a few blacks with some sense that get up there and start preaching to their race and start telling them, get out of the goddamn dark ages and come out here and earn your own living. Quit crying like a baby. Things were bad 200 years ago. They ain't that bad anymore, and it don't have to be bad if it is bad. If it's bad for a nigger now, it's because the son of a bitch don't want to do anything. You know? But, of course, the reason that will never happen no, is because that's going to require a, lot a whole of lot of people to take a whole lot of responsibility for themselves. Mm. It's a whole lot yeah. easier to blame everything on blame somebody else. else. Well, you know, I right. could be a millionaire, but the white man's holding me down. Yeah. You know, they grow up in a welfare family, they become mm. a welfare family, mm. and it just goes on and on and on. Uh, like you said, the nine kids instead of two or three, like right. any responsible couple would have. And, of right. course, it's not even a couple. Uh, they, they, they're they never married. They, they're yeah. 14 different fathers for the 14 different kids, right. none of whom pay child support. So the taxpayers got to support. And it, it, it's a never-ending cycle. And, of course, for them ever to, for this ever to stop, they'd all have to stand up and take responsibility for those actions. And, and of course, I mean, let's be realistic, it's not ever going to happen. No, no, blacks won't do that. What recourse do, do white folks really have other than to make a record and uh, you know you can either laugh or cry about it yeah, and like me true. I'm not a real weepy son of a bitch so I choose mm. to laugh about it you know